California's Bay Area, the land of rolling golden hills, fog-laced bridges, and tech-driven ambition, is a place where natural beauty meets urban innovation in a breathtaking blend. But beneath San Francisco's bustling streets, something ancient is stirring. Talk about earthquakes. We had a small swarm of earthquakes striking the East Bay today. You might have felt them. Nine of them rattled the San Ramon area, and this was along the Calaveras Fault. But beneath San Francisco's bustling streets, the quiet suburbs of San Ramon, and the gentle rises of the East Bay, something ancient and restless is stirring. A movement as old as the Earth itself, and as unpredictable as the tides. On December 19, 2025, the ground beneath the Bay Area delivered a stark reminder that California's paradise is built on unsteady ground. Near San Ramon, a community perched atop the well-known Calaveras Fault, a series of well over a hundred earthquakes jolted residents awake over a span of several weeks. The largest, a sharp rolling magnitude 4.0 quake, was felt as far as San Francisco and neighboring towns. Across those days and nights, dozens of smaller tremors between magnitude 2.5 and 3.8 rattled nerves and sparked fresh waves of speculation and unease. For California, earthquakes are an ever-present reality, woven into both urban legend and daily experience. But this was no ordinary tremor, no isolated event. Instead, it was an earthquake swarm, a relentless parade of seismic jolts erupting not from one dramatic rupture, but from a tightly clustered group of small shocks, each chipping away at the region's bedrock and collective composure. What made this episode remarkable wasn't just the number of quakes or the intensity. No serious damage was reported anywhere. It was the broader warning these events carried. Below highways, neighborhoods, and gleaming tech campuses, the earth was shifting. The question began to echo, was this just a noisy release of tectonic energy? Or perhaps a signal of something deeper developing beneath the bay? Let's look beneath the surface, through both the silence and the turbulence, and explore why an earthquake swarm in San Ramon captured scientists' attention and left a region holding its breath. Chapter 1 Bay Area Earthquake Swarm Unfolds It began without warning, as these things so often do. An unremarkable dawn broken by a jolt beneath San Ramon. The first in the line of quakes measured 3.1 on the Richter scale, rippling out curiosity across social feeds and local news. Residents had only begun to process the early shake when another tremor arrived. And another. Within days, around 100 earthquakes clustered within a one-mile radius beneath the East Bay suburb of San Ramon. By Friday night, December 19th, the strongest of these, a magnitude 4.0, sent vibrations from San Ramon to San Jose and beyond. Many shrugged it off at first as just another California quake. Social media users responded with their usual bravado mixed with a hint of unease. But this was something different an ongoing, tightly grouped sequence that turned ordinary living rooms into seismic listening posts. At the U.S. Geological Survey's Earthquake Science Center, the swarm illuminated screens, a flickering series of dots tracing faults that most people rarely thought about. Just what was behind the barrage? Was this a fluke or a warning sign? To make sense of it, you have to look at the ground beneath. San Ramon is no ordinary suburb. It sits astride the Calaveras Fault, a major branch of the wider San Andreas system, running north to south through the Eastern Bay Area and parallel to the Hayward Fault. Deep below, the land is carved by stress and friction. Long after the gold rush faded and Silicon Valley sprang up, the geologic clock kept ticking. Scientists classify this type of event as an earthquake swarm, a cluster of small to moderate quakes in the same area, usually spanning days or weeks. Unlike the pattern of a giant quake followed by aftershocks, Swarms often don't culminate in a major event. Instead, their unpredictability and persistence can fray nerves. The December 2025 swarm was not the first in Bay Area history, but its size and duration mark it as noteworthy. As quake after quake traced the Calaveras path beneath neighborhoods and shopping centers, researchers set to work. Was the Bay Area simply venting extra stress or hinting at deeper instability? For local families, the days ran on edge. Stories of sleepless nights, shifting picture frames, and conversations with neighbors about preparedness. Newsrooms fielded anxious calls. Teachers, bus drivers, and business owners alike felt an undercurrent of uncertainty. The Bay Area's past was never far from mind. The idea that beyond beauty and bustle, the ground itself was a force to be respected. 
Chapter 2 Calaveras Fault Ancient Engine of Upheaval To many, the Calaveras Fault is just a name, overshadowed by the infamous San Andreas. But for anyone living in San Ramon, Pleasanton, or the East Bay Hills, this is a presence you can't escape, one that cracks sidewalks and disturbs fences, shaping the very soil underfoot. What gives the Calaveras its power? And why do swarms happen here? The Calaveras stretches nearly 125 miles from the southern Diablo Range to the edge of the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta. It's a right lateral strike-slip fault, meaning the blocks of rock on either side slide past each other horizontally. Each year these plates inch forward by a few millimeters, barely moving by human standards, but building up force over time. That hidden tension is released in spurts, sometimes as larger quakes, sometimes as a swirl of smaller ones. Geologists describe the fault as a deep wound in the earth, a boundary traced not only in maps, but visible in disrupted layers, creek beds, skewed fences, and the subtle buckling of roads. The Calaveras doesn't move in isolation either. It interacts with the Hayward Fault to the west and the Greenville Fault to the east, creating a web of tension beneath the Bay Area. Imagine the subsurface here as a mosaic of fractured rock, sliced and re-glued through millions of years. When stress accumulates, it doesn't always burst along a single plane. Sometimes it finds weak spots, producing a flurry of smaller quakes, a swarm, adjusting and redistributing strain through the crust. San Ramon sits in a geographic pinch point between the soft sediments of river valleys and the hard bedrock of nearby hills. This transition not only channels seismic energy, it can amplify it. Geologists, using everything from core samples to GPS data, have mapped the way this patchwork releases energy. Slow, constant motion at some points, abrupt spasms in others. USGS scientists like Dr. Anne-Marie Balté have explained that most swarms don't precede large earthquakes. Instead, they usually reflect deep-set fluid movement or the shifting of brittle rock in the top few kilometers of crust. Still, rare instances exist where swarms have come before major events, so every new cluster warrants close observation and sometimes increases in regional preparedness. What's certain? The Calaveras does not keep to any human schedule. It remains a restless line, capable of both slow burning change and periodic upheaval. Chapter three, lessons from the past, swarms and surprises. San Ramon's December swarm is not an isolated event. In fact, its history is dotted with similar episodes. 10 years earlier in 2015, San Ramon experienced what was then the Bay Area's most significant swarm, more than 400 quakes in a few weeks. Back in 2003, another notable swarm rolled through the valley. In both cases, and in the latest, the effects were more psychological than physical, rattling nerves and routines, but causing no major structural harm. Swarm behavior is found elsewhere, too. California's Imperial Valley near the Mexican border and the geysers' geothermal fields in the north are famous for their clusters of quakes. The pattern is familiar, a burst of tremors, community anxiety, scientific scrutiny, and national headlines, followed by periods of seismic calm, or do they sometimes announce greater threats? Renowned seismologist Dr. John Vidal, an authority on California's seismicity, notes, when you see swarms, especially in regions with complex faults like Calaveras, it's a sign that the region is adjusting. Some swarms help reduce risk by releasing stress, others may serve as a prelude to a moderate event. Scientifically, earthquake swarms involve a series of shocks without a clear main event. They can be triggered by tiny amounts of fluid moving along fractures, lubricating fault slips, or simply by chains of minor quakes that trigger one another. Sometimes these releases are helpful, sometimes ambiguous. What set the 2025 San Ramon swarm apart was its proximity to densely populated suburbs, major highways, schools, and vital infrastructure. The Loma Prieta quake of 1989 and other shocks still haunt public memory, reminders that even routine events can be disrupted. History shows that periods of quiet aren't always a guarantee of safety, and busy spells don't always signal disaster. The unpredictability, the tension between short, noisy swarms and long, silent gaps drives scientists, engineers, and residents to stay on their toes. Here, the Bay Area's geology keeps its own counsel a fact that forces humility on experts and everyday people alike. Chapter 4 San Ramon, suburbia, shaken, nerves frayed. 
San Ramon's identity is built on calm, leafy streets, classic California parklands, curated neighborhoods, and sleek corporate campuses. But in the winter of 2025, a new and anxious rhythm emerged. You never really get used to it, shared one resident, describing how water glasses swayed and lights swung with each aftershock. School principals updated earthquake drills. Children swapped stories at lunch about midnight rumbles. Local real estate agents fielded awkward questions. Hardware stores sold out of flashlights and bottled water. Residents, many of whom had never felt so many quakes in years, began to re-examine their habits and emergency checklists. Is San Ramon especially vulnerable? Geography has a say. The suburb sits between the ancient alluvium of the valley, where soft earth can shake and roll somewhat like jelly, and the stubborn, fractured ridges of the Diablo Range. This mingling of material both dampens and amplifies quake waves, helping spread tremors over a wide area. Importantly, much of the East Bay felt the effects of this sequence. From Pleasanton and Dublin to even as far south as San Jose, where a magnitude 2.9 quake west of the city underlined the swarm's reach, thousands found themselves on edge. In total, well over 100 to 150 earthquakes were logged, making the rolling month a catchphrase among locals. Daily life adapted. Cafes offered customers nervous comfort. Yoga studios mixed quake safety into their routines. On social media, neighborhood groups shared seismic maps, updates from USGS, preparedness checklists, and sometimes just offered neighborly reassurance. The emotional stakes were real, even in the absence of physical destruction. No injuries or major structural failures were reported, but in a place as densely built and as economically and culturally vital as the Bay Area, repetition alone can be a trigger. Every shake served as an urgent reminder. Under every block and hillside, risk remains part of the region's identity. Chapter 5 Faults intertwined, the bigger Bay Area picture. Zoom out, and the Bay Area reveals an even more tangled seismic puzzle. Its surface is laced by multiple great faults, each with its own temperament and threat. The Calaveras is only one, though an active one. Nearby, the Hayward Fault is considered the region's ticking time bomb, the site of an infamous 1868 quake, and, researchers say, due for another major slip within decades. The massive San Andreas further west still stands as the source of the legendary 1906 earthquake. In such a tightly linked network, how much does a San Ramon swarm matter elsewhere? Dr. Anne-Marie Balte, a leading USGS seismologist, has emphasized the connectivity. Faults in the Bay Area don't act in isolation. When one releases stress or triggers a swarm, it can alter loading on other faults, sometimes miles away. That's why even a local sequence matters in the bigger picture. With each episode, swarm or rupture, the balance shifts. Sometimes the effects ripple instantly, sometimes changes linger for years. When San Ramon's swarm escalated in December 2025, researchers across the region stepped up monitoring elsewhere, alert for any sign of sympathetic upticks along Hayward, Greenville, and farther afield. Emergency planners responded as well. Inspired by the real-time lessons, Reminders went out about the benefits of home retrofitting, early warning alerts, and regularly updating disaster kits. In this sense, the Bay Area has become a real-world laboratory, a living test case for earthquake science, response strategies, and public resilience. Chapter 6. Scientific Vigilance, Monitoring the Swarm. A swarm like the one in San Ramon. The answer is a blend of cutting-edge technology and research experience. At the USGS headquarters, banks of screens update continuously with feeds from hundreds of sensors planted all across California. These seismic stations triangulate the location, depth, and force of each quake. During active swarms, teams of analysts and geophysicists, like Dr. Morgan Page, work day and night to detect, verify, and contextualize every event. For the December 2025 swarm, this vigilance paid off. Automated systems flagged rapid-fire quakes, distinguishing natural seismicity from industrial noise. Algorithms parsed ground deformation, slow slips, minute shifts, hoping to detect unusual patterns. International data sharing offered backup. Despite exponential advances in machine learning and modeling, prediction remains elusive. The Earth stubbornly resists forecasts. Communication is almost as important as detection. The Bay Area's early warning system, tied to mobile alerts, radio, and automated building responses, 
ensured that those at risk had seconds, sometimes minutes, to prepare. Companies paused elevators or shut down critical machinery in the first instant of a warning. School lockdowns and still, no science is perfect. As Dr. Page notes, swarm behavior offers lessons, but always with uncertainty at the center. Past experience helps guide response, but the Earth can always surprise us. The goal of all this vigilance isn't just to understand, but to equip. Whether it's improving retrofitting standards or refining alert delivery, the priority is to maximize Bay Area preparedness. Chapter 7 Swarms, Risk, and the Future of the Bay Swarms, however jarring and frequent most are, almost always wane harmlessly. For others, swarms serve as a visceral reminder that living here is a trade-off. Prosperity and beauty, tempered by the knowledge that the ground isn't perfectly dependable. Scientists widely agree. Swarms demand respect and close study, but not panic. Most are simply the Earth's way of releasing stress before it builds too high. Yet Bay Area history is littered with ordinary days that ended in disaster. The Loma Prieta quake in 1989 started with moderate foreshocks. The Hayward Fault, dormant for decades, has unleashed destruction before. The result? Unending vigilance. Have invested in seismic strengthening. Utilities routinely test response systems. Neighborhoods stage earthquake rehearsals. Families and businesses keep emergency supplies close at hand. The December 2025 swarm was, in this sense, a timely reminder. Plans can always be sharpened, that traverse fault lines daily. Every new sequence prompts an audit of readiness. In the end, every quake is a message from below, a nudge at the foundations, a signal to stay alert. It's a paradoxical truth. The earthquake swarm of San Ramon is at once a very local story and a chapter in a much larger narrative. As the Bay Area evolves and the world grows ever more connected and complex, the oldest clock of all, the geologic calendar, keeps ticking, indifferent to all our innovations. For now, as the quakes go quiet and ordinary days return, the scientists keep listening. Residents stay vigilant. The Earth holds its secrets, waiting. The story as ever moves just below our feet. Stay alert, Bay Area. Respect the restless land for every day delivers a lesson written not only in books and artifacts, but in the living ground beneath your feet. Stay curious, stay ready.